3D objects and DITs. There's drawable uh, meshes, these things that you can draw on. There's reference objects, uh, these kind of whole things here. Uh, Web storage. And then I uh, open, then I look at my Discord uh, thread in the Quest Web Tab browser. And I can either, uh, sometimes I can uh, download, use the URL from there directly in the artist, which is really convenient. And sometimes I have to download it into the Quest device storage and then load it, uh, load it from Quest device storage. And I put a little red arrow here because that's like the, uh, one of the slightly unexpected uh, uh, sort of like non-obvious bits of uh, of UI that that has to be handled. Okay, so now I'm going to go in. Uh, so in terms of import, uh, one of the examples is uh, uh, there's a model that I uploaded in uh, I uploaded earlier into Discord, and the way I get it into here is so I go to my Discord tab, I need a link for it, and. You can see that here I say a PC source model uploaded to Discord. If I click on this, I copy link. And this is a model that I made in Blender. In fact, my son made in Blender. And from here, you can do project uh, load. Go to edit URL to open. And this is the paste button here. And you click okay and that will put it into the text box for you it's really wide and you click load url and it's to let's say this new composition put that there shrink it down a little bit it open well paste so that's already player me url click enter click open um, there we are. Right. That. So here is the Ready Player Me avatar, uh, which I, I I think this is this is great that we can do this. <laughs> so this is entirely. There we are. So I can paint the jacket. Oh, I think I shrink it down. There we go. Anyway, I was here to, I'm not here to demonstrate my art skills. I'm here to demonstrate import, but just showing that um, that it is possible to import GLB directly from a URL. And the model encodes which way um, each vertex is pointing, and then based on which way it's pointing, uh, we map it, it to a specific face. Then um, uh, we project that vertex onto that face. So we see this particular vertex represented by this black line gets mapped to the front face um, and based on its location in space uh, it gets located at this point on the front face and that gets turned into a point uh, monster or whatever you want you can also do the uh, point to point with the shape from a 3d object and just like that um, you can again it takes whatever material you're using if these default six materials aren't enough for you you can uh, load more material either as a 2d um, canvas um, or as a 3d shape up at the top uh, you've got your export options um, jpeg compression or smart compression i recommend doing the smart compression now a uh, Draco compression um, if you want to uh, export it with a little extra compression and the tool that you're using can handle Draco compression uh, you can try the Draco compression option um, doesn't always work 100% reliably and go over to actually let's see how big it is before I try and import it to hubs it's one megabyte so should be doable so I'm going to uh, just drag and drop that into hubs and let's see what happens and there it is and, and okay so there it is um, the thing uh, I just created it's that easy to make things in VR and bring them right into hubs same deal for spoke uh, you just bring it into 
drag and drop it from the artiste into spoke. And there it is. You want to create a nice fancy scene. And so you've even got the hubs window as a reference. Uh, but there it is. There's a zillion uh, nodes because they're all different shapes and things. 